Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is the very first non-house related video that I am shooting in my house. Uh, I moved in last week, so there's, you know, stuff everywhere, but we're gonna do this. So um, today we are gonna be making a mashup of like jeans and sweatpants. I've seen several brands do this, but I'm gonna be channeling one specific kind of look from a designer named Greg Lauren. Apparently he's related to Ralph Lauren. Never heard of him before, except that when I was doing the editing for my Goodwill Challenge video part one, um, I was looking for examples to pull when I was outside talking about wanting to do a deconstructed denim look. Uh, so I just did a little Googling to find something that I thought would be kind of a good inspiration for that. And I came across these and I um, put them in the video and then I went back and watched it later. And I'm like, well, those were actually really cool. Um, I kind of wish I had made something like that. Also, you may know that I have an ongoing saga where I like a slim fit jean, but they wear out really quickly in the crotch for me. Um, don't know why. My very first video here on this channel was my denim chaps video because I had a pair of crotchless jeans that I loved and I wanted to make them work. And so I just like totally cut the crotch out of them and made them into chaps. So today I thought it would be the perfect project. I have another pair of jeans that I blew the crotch out of. And so I am going to be combining them with a pair of sweatpants that I found at Goodwill yesterday. I was pretty lucky. I had a really good Goodwill day, you know, when you go in and it's just like everything aligns and you find exactly what you're looking for. I found um, the sweatpants that I needed over in the women's section. And I also found a pair of really cool like motocross pants and a uh, vintage Nike windbreaker thing. Very, very cool. Um, but I was lucky that I found exactly what I needed because these kind of sweatpants can be sometimes hard to find because they're just like an easy staple for anybody. So we're gonna be combining the jeans and the sweatpants. Um, let's take a look at the inspiration. Uh, pulling it up on my computer here. Um, so this is actually the image that I put in that video um, with just the back of the jeans. And I have to say, I like the way these look better from the back, which I don't often say that. Um, I like the way that it's cut right through here. Um, I'm not sure about why they put this panel in, but I'm guessing it's because maybe the way that the jeans usually overlap on an angle, it feels a little bit too, maybe too much fabric and it couldn't lay flat enough. Looking at the jeans from the front, I, there's a couple things that I'm really not sure about. First of all, I hate this kind of plaid moment. Mm -mm, not gonna do that. But my jeans aren't distressed, so I'm probably just gonna leave them pretty plain. Um, the colors that I found, the sweatpants and the color of my jeans are very, very similar to this, which is cool. Um, I am not sure how I feel about this drawstring situation. I like the idea of that, but it makes this waistband feel like it's sitting really funny or it got pulled too tight or something. I'm not sure that I want to do that. I think I might leave the button closure that my jeans already have. Although, side note here, how do we feel about stretch denim? Let me know in the comments because I, so the, the pair of jeans that I had before that became the chaps. I loved those jeans so much. They had no stretch to them whatsoever, which sometimes made them a little bit hard to sit in, if I'm being honest, but they just like, I could wear them all the time and they always fit and they were great. This pair of jeans that we're gonna be modifying today, they're stretch and I like them when I first put them on, like after, you know, when I bought them in the store or uh, after they're, they're freshly washed, but like an hour in, they're like hanging around my butt. Um, so anyway, what I was getting at here is that I'm wondering about whether I would like the drawstring to help them stay up because conceivably that's not gonna change because the uh, sweatpant part only starts down here. The top of the jeans really aren't altered. Um, so we'll see about that. Also, I'm not really sure how I feel about the way that the jeans are cut from the side on this kind of like rounded thing with the sweatpant part down here. I wonder, I think the thing that I might try and I can always change it is to cut this line straight down instead so that the outs from the outside you see like jean here and then just the inside has sweatpants, more like kind of a gusset situation, like a really oversized gusset. Um, I just, something about this just looks a little bit shabby to me. I don't know how, how do we feel about that? But again, I really love how it looks from the back and that line coming down, but I think it could look even better with that line coming straight down the center of the calf and the back. I just think that line might be a little bit more flattering. 
and then yeah, I went on doing that. So one of the things that's kind of exciting about this project is that I think it's gonna be pretty simple. I've said that many times before, um, but I think this one is not gonna involve seam ripping for days and a ton of hand sewing and whatever. I'm just gonna cut the jeans, pin them onto the, the sweatpants, um, top stitch it, because there's a raw edge along it. I don't even have to put right sides together. Um, and then uh, cut out the sweatpants from the inside. Two things that could go wrong. One, I could cut the jeans too much and then there's nothing I can do at that point. Or two, um, I just need to be really mindful of the fit. This has potential to have like a really weird crotch situation. And so I'm just gonna probably do a lot of pinning and trying before I sew it together just to make sure the fit is hitting right, um, which might be a little bit tricky to do that before I cut everything apart. Um, but I don't know, I'm excited. Let's give this a go. I started by drawing out a rough shape on one side of the jeans in chalk, keeping the Greg Lauren jeans on screen as a reference. I opted to make a slightly more curved shape in the front and to carry the line straight down the leg to the hem. This is just a personal preference for how I think my jeans would look best. You could also replicate the inspiration jeans exactly just by matching the more diagonal cut of the denim. So it occurred to me as I was drawing the shape on the jeans and getting ready to cut, um, this is sort of a weird deja vu moment back to my first video with the denim chaps. That video has been really, really popular and I see that a lot of people come across that video because they're searching for how to make chaps. I love that and that's very cool. It occurs to me also that that video is quite complicated. There's a lot of like zippers get sewn in and things get turned under and like, you know, like there's a bunch of really complicated things happening there. And so I just had this thought, like this would be a much, much easier way to go in terms of making chaps for like a Halloween costume maybe. Um, of course you would change the shape that I'm doing, but you would just directly sew it onto the other pants and get the look without having to do all the complicated other steps. So just thinking about that. Here goes nothing. I went in boldly with my sharp sewing scissors and cut along my lines, hugging the inside of the lines just in case. I didn't want to cut too much away, you know? After cutting the front and back on one side, I attempted to transfer those lines to the other side. In some areas, I was able to line up the seams and use the cut side as a template, but this was really hard to do up in the crotch area. So I used my measuring tape to measure the distance from existing landmarks, the seams or the pockets, in order to place my line. Feeling that everything looked symmetrical enough, I cut the second side. My denim is ready for sweatpants. After some trial and error, I found that the best way to start pinning the pieces together was to lay the sweatpants really flat and pin the jeans to them starting at the bottom so that the hems would match up. I then lined up the center seams at the crotch and connected the dots with my pins. I pinned the front and back of one leg to see how it was working. The first try on was pretty successful all things considered. There was some tightness in the upper thigh area that I had to alleviate. I also wanted the leg to fit a little bit slimmer, so I repinned those sections while wearing it to get a better feel for the proportions. I also noticed that the butt of the jeans felt like it came really low, so I took them off and adjusted that curve to land a bit higher between the back pockets. I repinned and tried again. Much better. As I attempted to make the legs more fitted, the sweatpants were starting to bunch up where there was extra fabric, so it was time to cut them too. I traced along the line where they were meeting the denim, and then cut a full inch outside of that line just to be sure that I would have enough seam allowance and room to make any changes. And I was really glad that I did. After pinning the denim back to the sweatpants along the lines that I drew, I noticed that the outer side seam was starting to pull forward a little bit. I realized that when slimming down the leg earlier, I had only taken fabric out of the front and none from the back. I adjusted for this problem by overlapping the denim and the sweatpants significantly more in the back, at least three inches, and taking out as much overlap as I could in the front. Again, I'm glad I cut a little extra. This helped to make the side seams fall properly and took out a little bulk in the lower legs, which I liked. Perfect.
After pinning the other side just to be sure that the fit would work, we're ready to sew. If I were going to make this again, I would have pinned and sewed the front and then pinned and sewed the back afterward. However, since I was tired of pinning and unpinning at this point and didn't want to lose the placement of the pieces and the fit that I had worked out, I opted to keep everything pinned. This made it pretty tricky to get the seams through the machine, given that the legs were now kind of tight. I attempted to start at the bottom of one leg and go up and over and down the other leg, but I only made it less than halfway up before feeding the pants through the machine became totally impossible. The best way I found to make this work was to start at the center crotch area and work my way down each leg. This way, I was at least able to complete one whole leg at a time. I sewed about a quarter inch from the edge of the denim and tried to keep that distance as consistent as possible. That way, when I pulled out the threads to fray the edges, I would have a nice even amount of fray. I cut away the excess threads to match the length of my frayed edge, and then turned the jeans inside out to cut away any excess sweatpant fabric. I don't want to compromise the fit with any extra bulk. And that's it. Pretty simple after all. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to see more upcycled projects like this one. I'm working hard to share content more regularly again, so go ahead and ring the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And now check out the finished look.